We're sowing broad beans today on Pots and Trowels, and that's brought to you with the support of Cobra Garden and King Seeds. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. Well, I've got some exciting news for you today because we've been joined by a new sponsor and that is King Seeds, who are based down in Essex and they're a well-established seed company selling all sorts of fruit, vegetables and flower seeds. So really good to have them on board. And what they've done to kickstart the growing season is they've sent me a box full of gardening goodies loads of seeds. So we've got seeds here of all different types which we'll be sowing in the vegetable garden this coming season. We've got some onion sets, we've got some seed potatoes and some flowers of course. I always like a few flowers in the veg garden just to help attract those pollinating insects. But what I'm going to do to start with is sow some broad beans because we're now beginning of February, still too cold and too wet to be sowing directly in the garden. But broad beans, also known as flava beans, are one of the toughest vegetables that we grow. And you can, in fact, sow these outside in October. They'll germinate, produce young plants that will overwinter and then grow away in the spring. But I find if we get a very wet winter, like the one we've just had, sometimes they can sulk and they're not very happy. So I always prefer to sow this time of the year, under cover, that raises plants that we can then plant out in the garden later on in spring when the soil's warmed up. But these only need about five or six degrees Celsius for germination to take place. Um, and this one, the Sutton, is the one that I prefer because it's a nice dwarf form. You can get broad beans that will grow to three feet tall, but this is ideal for smaller gardens, raised beds, or even containers. So we're gonna grow in a couple of different ways. So perfect for growing them now. If you haven't got a greenhouse, of course, then you know just wait a few weeks and sow them outside or maybe a cold frame or a cloche. I'm going to start them off in some of these cell trays. These are really good because with these you get no root disturbance. We'll get one plant per cell uh, and then they'll transplant without any shock or disturbance. And I'm using a multi-purpose compost here. So this is a peat-free multi-purpose compost. I've broken all the lumps up because sometimes it can be a little bit lumpy. So just break it up so it's nice and friable like that. And then all I'm doing is just running my hand over it to fill it into each of the individual cells like that. So I'm not firming it down and a little tap, maybe just a little bit more so they're all full. We want them all to have the same amount of compost and then we can get rid of the rest of it. Sowing is very, very easy. So I'm just going to rip open my packet of beans. And I just think it's a good one to start the season off. It's a nice big bean. We can see what we're doing here. So there we can see really healthy beans there. I'm going to use my finger as my dibber and I'm just going to make a hole in the centre of each of these cells. This is a 12 cell tray. You could use a nine. You wouldn't want anything any bigger than that, really. Because once these are about three inches tall, they're going to go out into the garden. And then it's one bean per hole and I'm just going to push it down so it's about well almost at the bottom of the hole really so that it's going to have maybe an inch or half an inch of compost over the top of it so we just push one of those into each of the cells so it really is simple normally you'll get a very good germination I expect that hopefully all of these will germinate I'm going to sow several trays anyway and then to finish off just a handful of compost over the top like that to cover them over. So they're now surrounded by that lovely friable compost. And of course, the other thing that you must do is to write a label because if you're gonna be sowing lots over the coming weeks, then you can always easily forget what you're sowing. So I'm gonna write this one. So this is a broad bean and the variety is the Sutton, just to remind me. And I like to put the date on as well. So today's date is the 1st of February. These are the very first seeds I've sown this season. So there we go. That's it. So I'm going to pop them over there, give them a drop of water, and then come back and look at the seeds. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm just going to give them a, a drink using a fine rose on this little watering can. I'm going to pass over them a couple of times because I want the water to drain right the way down to the bottom of the container. And then they won't be watered again until they start to pop through in two or three weeks' time. If you've been out buying seeds from a garden centre or you've sent off for some from a seed company, the first thing to do is when you get them is to open the box. And I couldn't wait to unpack these. I knew what was in it, but I just needed to actually feel them. You sort through them, that's the reason I do it. I like to know what I've got and I like to sort them out into sort of groups that will be sown in the garden. You can either do it on the weeks you're going to sow them or I put mine with the root crops and the brassicas and the peas and beans and so forth. And if you've got a little bit of time, it's also worth maybe get a little diary and just work out the dates you're going to sow them just as a reminder so that you sow them on time. Don't forget you can also stagger the sowing with the beans we've just put in. I've sown a tray there. I'll probably sow a second tray today, but then when they're couple of inches tall I'll maybe sow a couple more trays and that way it prolongs the cropping period so you've got uh, beans to pick all the way through the summer there. So unpacking them is important. What do you do with them? Keep them somewhere nice and cool and dry. That is really important. So a, an old biscuit tin is ideal because that keeps out any damp and any moisture and we want to put them in a cool shed or a cool cupboard in the house where they're not going to get too warm and that way they'll stay fresh for so much longer. And in our box we've also got some onion sets. Again it's too early to plant these into the garden. I'm going to be you know another couple of months before these go out. So what I'll do with these is just keep these in our shed which is really cool. So they're going to be kept cool to keep them dormant. Uh, we don't want them sprouting. And with the potatoes here then these we will start off soon and we'll show you this on another video. We may in fact have already done it on a video which you'll be able to find on YouTube of course but we will stand these up in some trays so that these little shoots at the top will start to sprout ready for when we plant them at the beginning of April. So check everything that you've got, keep it in the right condition so it stays fresh and then you can have hours and hours of pleasure planting and sowing all your wonderful seeds. Thank you for watching Pots and Trowels and it's great to think we've sown something that's going to be planted in the veg plot in just a couple of months time. Next week we're giving the hedges a trim before the birds start to nest so we'll see you then. Bye!